Uh, this is the top of the Rialto, but that's not where the bees are. The bees are on the International Hotel Rialto, and I'm thinking they're on the top of this uh, roof here. The mural ne next door glorifies work and workers, which uh, we think is a great motivation for the bees, which are located on the roof right just there next to the mural. What are we doing here in the centre of city, Melbourne? Okay, we're at the Intercontinental Hotel Melbourne and we're looking at their beehives on the roof, checking how much honey's there and seeing how our latest uh, beehives, which we installed last month, are doing. And how many hives have you got, Lyndon? There's six on this roof and two on another one. We'll have a look and see, uh, see what's there. Okay, which hive are you going to open first? I'm going to open this hive's probably the weakest out of all of them. Mm -hmm. Still got, uh, looking, before I even open it, I'm looking at the entrance here. The numbers are pretty good, coming in and out. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't, look, doesn't indicate that it's dying out or anything. I've just found that the honey yield's been lower. So it could be that their, their natural makeup is not uh, particularly good as foragers go. So and maybe just, you're thinking of maybe re -queen this one at some stage? I think so, maybe. See how they go. Their temperament's very nice, though, so I don't really want to do away with a good queen who's uh, nice and quiet. Okay, well, let's have a look inside. I try and use minimal smoke as well. Oh yes. One because the bees are really good. Two, it's uh, can get a bit windy for them, and uh, the last thing you want to do is upset them with loads of smoke. And as you can see, these are just walking around nicely. They're not they're not flying up at me or anything. Really, really lovely girls, these ones. And what is the history of this queen, Lyndon? Uh, this was already here when I um, was asked to say cope managing these hives, but mm -hmm. um, she's an Italian. Uh, she's probably less than a year old. So that's probably, that's, I'd say, why they're, they're still very good. And how long have you, you been managing these hives? Not for very long, probably for about the last uh, two or three months. Oh, yes. And looking down, you can get an idea looking down as to what's happening and how many there are. There you are, you can see them all there. They've had their smoke, they're all looking for their honey. And I, I love the way you just see all their heads poking just below the bars. Mm. I mean, you can't get better behaved than that, can you? Wonderful. And therefore, you don't need us to use as much smoke, therefore, you can get That's better right. bee behaviour. Yeah, better bee behaviour. And when, when you do need to use the smoke, they'll respond because they're not fatigued by it mm. or stressed. Um, I, I find over smoking can actually cause them to be quite annoyed as well. Yep. Now I tend to just have a quick look already and, and what I'm looking for is the bee numbers and I can see there are bees covering every frame. Now I can also see the middle frame here has been built out quite wide, quite fat, which tells oh, me yes. they're possibly running out of room. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course because they'll start in the middle and work outwards, as soon as they finish they'll go back to the middle and fill more in there because it's a warmer place. Mm -hmm. So I'll go through and actually lift the frames out and have a look. Well I expect this one to have uncapped honey of course because they've reopened it. Uh, hopefully there's some capped honey in there. I'm going to just uh, loosen the frames a little bit first. Sometimes I just loosen them all at once and sometimes I do it one by one. Mm -hmm. It just depends on uh, how I feel that day. I'm always careful not to squash any bees when I'm loosening my frames. I notice this end one is uh, very close to the wall of the hive. This one here? Uh, yeah. the, the, the last one. Yeah, it's very close, it's isn't it? Probably not got much on this side. Thinking right there. And you probably can rotate it perhaps. I think the yeah. world might be a good place for it there, In what do you reckon? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, let's have a look. I'm going to reserve any other comments until I can see now. Well, the comb looks fairly new. Okay, and it's not capped at all. Still, it's fullish. It's filling up nicely though. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, well, as you can see, the inner, inner one is slightly capped, so that's usually the truth. Mm. So they're, the they're on their way, aren't they? Yes. It's a nice light honey too, this one. 
Um, you got any idea where it uh, is coming from? Not until I taste it. Mm -hmm. As soon as I taste it, I'll be able to tell you. I'm pretty good with uh, the undertones, mm -hmm. under notes rather. The last one we had was quite dark, and um, I'd love to know what it was. And of course, you don't need to worry about getting dirt on the um, frames when you put them outside because we're actually on outdoor carpet. You want that? AstroTurf. AstroTurf, that's, that's yes. right. So I can just put them down there. As normally, I'd have a, have a, have a tray or put mm. them in the lid. Mm -hmm. Or, best thing is to have another nuke on standby. Yes. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So, this is interesting here. This is what mm. I like. Now, this is above the Queen Excluder, but can you see this repair? Yes, they've made drones. They've made drone, and yeah. I find that a lot that they get lazy when they want to put honey in, and they'll make massive cells. In fact, I haven't quite seen such large cells. I, they're very large. They're, they're, they're very. Yeah, very. I don't even think if you put that in the brood box, I don't think you'd get a drone in there. No, so maybe. They probably just leave it. I don't know. And of course, the larger the cell, the more efficient it is. Yeah. Less strength, of course. Mm. But they've, they've obviously been short of time and just thought, let's, you know, so bees do bodge jobs. Mm. <laughs> and look at that one. There, we, there you go again. So th this one obviously had a big hole in it last time. And uh, we they've put it back in and they've repaired it. And they've done a very good job too. They've done a great job. Yeah. Slightly wavy. Oh, yes. Very nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm pleased with that. So. What, what's your plan going to be at this stage? You may just rotate the frames, Lyndon. I'm going to rotate the frames, yeah, at this stage. I think I'm going to leave them probably for another couple of weeks. Um, I was thinking of putting another box under, but mm -hmm. that might be things are slowing down now this time of year. Yes, um, I think that would be the best uh, advice. The only get these capped fully. Mm, get them yeah. capped fully. The, the only reason I would put a box under is uh, if the temperatures continue to be high, being on a roof, it will be for ventilation. I find that will buy me some time. So let's take that end one out, loosen it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move these along. Okay, so this is the one which is the, the full up one. The heavy one. It might just be that's at the top. Oh, it's got a good weight to it. Wow, it's got a lovely weight. And if you see this honey as well, it's much darker. Much darker honey that's been in there since I was probably here last month, mm -hmm. and that's the sort of stuff we were extracting last month dark, rich honey. And where, where does that come from? This one, I'd say this comes uh, from there's some uh, gardens at the, at the top of uh, William Street there near the Lord Walk. That's probably where they were foraging then. Um, I couldn't tell you what it is. No, I don't know. okay. Once I, once I get used to this site more, and uh, I'm around to observe where they're going more and more, I'll actually have a clear idea of what they're foraging on. Mm -hmm. um, being a new site, I've been more concerned with getting everything in order. And so what's the idea? You put this one at the end so yep. that they've almost filled it. That's right. And then you're going to put some empty ones in the, towards the middle. That's exactly right. So this, this basically, they're capping it off anyway. So it doesn't matter if they slow down on capping that because it's ready. Mm. Yes. And uh, we'll, we'll get the M2 one in the middle where they, where they like it. I just got to make sure I don't squash any of it. As you can see, that's going to have quite a big gap uh, at the end, but it's quite full, so don't mind. And here's the end one that you were talking about, and you're right, there's not much in it. It's pretty, pretty shallow. Are you able to, yes, are you able to shake it to see if there's any nectar there or? Sure. Um, okay, just get some bees off and um, so it doesn't, doesn't look like it. A couple of little drops. Little, few little drops. Yeah. That's a good test to see if they're actually bringing nectar in on that day. That's right. And they will basically mature it overnight. Is that what you're, you, yeah. you would suggest? Yes. Yeah, they'll mature it pretty quickly. Okay, well, um, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm not going to bother going through every single frame because I've got a rough idea yeah. of what's happening. Yeah. I know we've got some room and to play with. The next frame, actually, I could see looking down the top, actually, is this one. That has got much more capped honey on it. Yeah, 
probably the best one of the, of the so box. Far. But if I do this, <laughs> as you can see, yes. I like the butter yellow uh, comb. It's a lovely colour, isn't it? Wonderful. Yeah. And that that's, uh, comes from, of course, what they've been eating. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to have a quick look in the brood box. Uh, I want to see if, if the queen's laying well. Yes, as you say, there's not a low, overly large number of bees. No, not really. They're covering every frame, but really, you know, this, this hive never got up to three boxes, which is, is what I would have expected at some point, given the queen's been in there for the best part of a year. Mm. I'm forgetting uh, oh, to knock these bees up here. Now, I don't know if you're a dump them outside the front or inside person, but I like to put them in the top. Yes, that's what um, I usually like to do too. Just Except, of course, if you're shaking the queen down. That's right. Yeah. Make sure she's in the bottom box. A little shake off and does it, I find. You really only need to do this on the last frame that you put in. That's right. You notice I've always had my brush in my hand the whole time. You can get used to hanging on to that. You don't notice after a while. Oh, right. Something I could look perhaps learn myself. <laughs> when you've got hives in a row like this, oh. there's nothing worse than working way along them saying, where's my brush? And having to go back. So I, I just make a habit of always having it there. Mm -hmm. So we'll just slide that one back in. Now sometimes, um, let's say if I was coming here in, in another week, um, Rather than going for this again, I could just simply take the whole top box off next time, straight away. And I'd know by the weight if they put more in it. Mm -hmm. And then I can go straight down if I want to check the brood next time. Um, you don't have to go through every frame and every box. And what is, what is the winter supply of nectar here? You've got to take that into account when you're moving. That's right. It's normally get a little rub like this. Raising any alarm uh, pheromones. Squash bees is, is pretty bad when you're trying to, when you're halfway through working hard, you know? Yes. So, what can you observe by just uh, looking at it now, Lyndon? Looking here, okay, well, still good bee numbers, um, but they they don't seem overly active. I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty docile and calm. Um, I don't see any fat frames on the ends here, so they're not packing honey in here. Mm -hmm. um, normally that's a sign that you've got less of a brood laying area or they're running out of room. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to have a look in and, and hopefully what I'd like to see is at least four frames of brood. Okay, well we'll have a look. It doesn't look as though that's there's as much there as you'd hoped perhaps. Because the end, end, end frames look a bit empty. On. So what I'm doing is going around the whole edges so I don't ping any bees off. You see they've got a little bit of bracing comb and joined, the, joined it all together a little bit. If you loosen that first, you get them off fairly gently like that. And of course, what do we do? We turn it over. Have you ever seen the Queen there? Yes. Okay, well that's well worth doing, isn't yeah. it? More, more than a few times, actually. Mm -hmm. That goes on that way up, in yeah. case the Queen happens to be there and goes down into the honey super. That's right, I'll just pop them off again. And yeah, down here I do give them a, a second pump of smoke. Uh, very gentle one. Mm -hmm. But purely, I, I do find if bees are going to react, it's normally when you're right down here. Um, on a roof where it's more windy, they might be more inclined to react as well. They don't like wind very much or drafts. So, depending on what kind of uh, day you're working your hives, you'll need to read those uh, situations into it in terms of how you approach opening the bottom. Once again, take the second last frame out. Like I work backwards, so yeah. I'm always levering up the next one. Yes. It doesn't matter which way around you do it, of course. Oh, well, that's encouraging, Lyndon. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Quite a so far, drones. a bit of drone so uh, On the outside, yeah. so that's not too bad. That's where you'd expect them to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 
I'd say the, the drone population is not that high. I mean, it's pretty good, isn't it? One or two walking around there. They might be got drone cells, which oh, is encouraging. A bit, mm. bit too many there, perhaps. There are quite a lot there. But normally, you'd see a lot walking around too, but you can just see one here and there. But I'm hoping they've left them all on the outside. Now again, I'm going to just put this near the front like this, just at an angle, and I allow the fat bit of the frame to lean against the wood. Yes. I'm not digging in just to get to the hive and ruining the frame. Of course, if I've missed the queen, she's going to drop up and walk in. The, the, the difference in weight is amazing. It's so There's a much lighter. Yes. It's got a slightly irregular brood pattern there. Yeah, that could be a sign of disease, couldn't it? Is that what you're thinking? Mm-hmm. There has been a bit of chalk brood around this year, just a little bit, but... Right. Uh, is there, in those empty cells, are there eggs and larva? Larva, in all of them. Oh, well, that's 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 OK. That's it might okay. have just got out of sequence at some stage. I think so. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if, if perhaps I'd have put two boxes on last time if they would have actually increased. Could have done a bit of brood rotation. Uh, I think there is a bit of laying space still. I'm looking at the other, the two frames at the other end. There's the queen. Okay. So she was oh, a yes. marked queen, you can see. Yes. She's pretty calm. There she goes, hiding around the bottom. Doesn't like the light very much. So it's good to know where the queen is because you can be extra careful with that frame. That's right. And not worry so much about the others. Now I feel like a real beekeeper as well. If you don't find the queen, you, you feel a little bit, uh, a little bit amateurish. Of course, the trouble is when to find the queen when you're looking for her, yeah, yeah, when you right. need to find her. Um, and, and, and the knack is when you find the queen, not to be too surprised. You're meant to make it look as though you knew, you are such an expert, you knew she was there all along. Well, looking where she is, it's in an expected location because she should be near cells, empty cells. Yes. Uh, if we haven't disturbed her too much with smoke, that's where we're likely to um, see her. That's right. So, and what are we going to find? Let's, let's carry on. I'm going to put her right at the end here for now, mm -hmm. uh, just to keep her separate. I don't have a, a spare nuke with me, but I've left a frame gap between her and the, and the next frame. I'm just going to chill. Use her. She's likely to stay there and not walk across the, the bottom. Um, I, I, my feeling is that she's gone to the edge because she's hot. Uh, oh, yes, not because of the. No, uh, it's 20, 29, it's been today. Uh, the sun's only just gone in, it's yeah. 4 o'clock. Mm. There we go, look at that. She's, that's, she's that's laid to not the top. That, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a good pattern. That's, a good, that's good, isn't it? And yeah. you can see it's fairly new uh, comb. regular comb here, that's probably where the foundation got buckled when it went in. Ah yes, and as I can see a, a queen cell or queen cup there which... Queen cup, I think that's more of a play cell. But yes, it's only just there. I guess for an emergency in case you did die for some reason, they've got something to start off a new queen I'm cell. I'm going to leave it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, leave it well, yeah. Uh, do, you, do you remove yours? Not, not at this time of the year, but in spring, yes. Yeah. These older frames with the divide in the middle, mm -hmm. I've come across a few of these over my time and I, I find they don't like them very much. Mm. Um, you can see here, look, there's lots of pollen packed in and it's old pollen. Um, that, that's probably not going to be used, I don't know. Yes, I find that they collect much more pollen than they use and you end up, it's a waste of space really. It is, so we're, we're going to have to manage this out. This might need to be moved to the end, uh, so that when the brood hatch, they yep. just fill it with honey or whatever. Yeah. Uh, if they don't, of course, we can then remove it from the hive and we'll have no brood in it. Yep. Other option is to move it above the queen excluder and put it in the middle. Yep. But that's, that's a frame that you, you get rid of in the, yeah. in the short term. This is a good way of getting them out of the way. If you want to see if there's any eggs in there. Yep. And I can see the eggs in there, so I'll, I'll leave it. But that's a key thing. She's laying and she's low. She's laying, but it's irregular. You can see it's, it's 
Well, you probably can't. It's around here. Whereas this, this has got pollen. Yes. Whereas you'd expect the pollen to be up here. But basically, if you laid in any empty cell, which is uh, yeah. desirable. That's right. Pollen doesn't All right, we'll leave that. Not a bad pattern. Bit of pollen there. Bit of an old frame. Old frame. Yeah. Some brute, some drone. Nice there though. Okay. So, so Lyndon, you've seen what you wanted to see and just going to close it up. put that close it up. Okay. Close it up and then have a look at the next one. The next one I'm going to just simply look in the top, take one frame out and lift the box up. And I'll know by the weight if it's comparable to this one. And that'll save time. I can actually go straight to the brood and look how you know, she's laying and then keep on moving through them. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've done my main check on the weakest hives. I'm going to gauge the rest of that.